Hello and welcome to Road CC's strength training series for cyclists. In this video, we're going to introduce the series and look at the core strength that is so important to cycling. Guiding you through the series is Menachem Brody of Human Vortex Training. He's a qualified cycling and strength and conditioning coach with over 15 years of experience helping everyone from mid-category choppers like myself to professional cyclists. Now, if you're a cyclist that is in any way competitive, whether that's just against your mates up the local climb or in a race with a number on your back, you've probably considered off the bike training as part of your routine. And to get the most out of your performance on the bike, strength training plays a vital role. That is why you will see the pros regularly hitting the gym. But strength training doesn't just mean doing endless huge deadlifts or following a bodybuilding program. We are cyclists after all. So anything we do needs to be aimed at improving our abilities on the bike. One of the first areas a lot of cyclists think about is core strength. Many of us are aware that it's important, even if we're not quite sure just how and why. And usually we think that improving involves exercises like planks, crunches, and sit-ups. However, spending time on these moves doesn't always translate into a noticeable improvement on the bike. And that can feel like a waste of training time. To understand how to produce power on the bike most efficiently, it's first important to understand that the core is more than just the abs. We're talking about all of the muscles between your neck, elbows, and knees, plus the many joints in between those. Training your body to be stiff at the torso and the hips and the spine, and allowing more efficient movements from the hips and the shoulders, that's what training your core for cycling performance really means. It takes practice, refinement, and time, but if you put in the effort, the rewards can be huge. So without further ado, we're going to show you six performance boosting moves that will help you ride more powerfully and even feel better off of the bike. We're going to head over to Menachem to talk us through each of the exercises. If you have any questions about the exercises, comment below and we'll do our best to get them answered. Right, it's exercise time. When you look on the internet for the McGill Crunch, you're going to get well over 500 different videos of how not to do them. Now this exercise is butchered immensely as well as a couple of others here in the series. So pay attention to the cues because how you do the exercise is going to significantly change whether or not you're gonna get the outcomes that you're after. Now the McGill Crunch is gonna be a little bit of a challenge for most of us as it's teaching us to lock together the rib cage and the pelvis. So before we go down to the ground, what I'd like for you to practice is keeping the chin tucked. Find the space between your six pack and your obliques, a little tiny ridge there, or where they would be, and you're going to gently, or aggressively rather, push out. You can also do this gently if you have the ability to already lock, but what we're looking for is the ability to use the full transverse abdom abdominus to lock the rib cage and pelvis together. Now the McGill Crunch uh, is gonna keep a chin neutral position, so we don't wanna have your head poking forward either. Just standing nice and tall, feet short width apart, brace. Let's go down to the ground and see how the McGill Crunch or the McGill Curl Up is executed properly. The first thing to note is that when we're setting up for the McGill Crunch is one leg is going to be bent with the foot flat on the floor, not too close to the butt. We wanna have it right around even with the knee. Find what's comfortable for you. But we want that foot position to help us keep a nice neutral spine. Uh, we do not want to do anything with our, our backs. We wanna keep them nice and neutral. Now the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our fingers underneath our lower back. So right where the top of your glutes are, you're gonna have the triangle right in through there. And that's gonna help us bolster the natural arch in the back. We don't wanna have them too high or too low, just there to keep a nice neutral arch in the back. Our fingertips are gonna be pressure sensors, allowing us to know if we're crunching and moving too much or if we're doing the movement correctly. Now, for the sake of the demonstration, we're gonna keep my left leg straight and my right leg is going to be bent. Now I'm gonna take those hands underneath and what I'm looking for with the hands essentially is to find where my natural arch is and then to have my fingertips just underneath the top of my pelvis, which is right about here. 
Now, the next part that's gonna be a little bit challenging for us as cyclists is going to be bringing the elbows up off of the ground. Now, if you start to cramp or start to have serious pain in the front of your shoulder, you can certainly leave the elbows on the ground. Uh, but lifting the elbows is important because it keeps us from being able to cheat with our arms. Now, next, we're going to take the chin tucked position. And now we're gonna use that brace and we're gonna pretend as if there's a scale underneath our head and we want it to say zero stone. We want it to have a zero. That's all the movement we're gonna look for out of this. So I'm going to stop talking for a second. I'm gonna push my tongue into the top of my mouth and forward into my teeth and gently clench my jaw shut. This is gonna help take some of the stress off of the neck. The scale is reading zero right now and I'm able to feel a full 360 degree abdominal brace. Now breathing while you're doing this is quite a challenge, but when you first begin, we don't have to worry about breathing because we're just gonna hold this for about two or three seconds. If you're having difficulty doing this correctly or you feel like you're crunching up and getting too much motion and the scale is reading more than zero stone because you're coming all the way up, you can take one hand out, the other hand is gonna stay under the back. Again, those fingertips are those pressure sensors telling you if you're coming up too much. Find that area between the six pack and the obliques dig those fingers in, and then gently let a little bit of air out with the tss, trying to get the weight off of the scale from the head to read zero. Now notice when I'm lifting, I'm lifting in a head neutral position. This is really important. We wanna keep the head locked and back down. It's a very small motion. It's not actually a crunch as many people think it is. This is the McGill crunch. Start off with two or three repetitions. It doesn't necessarily matter which leg is up, but we do wanna try and make sure that you're not overusing your hip flexors. Would you believe me if I told you that most of us are doing our side planks incorrectly? Well, Dr. Stuart McGill, who actually designed the side plank exercise, teaches it with the top foot forward. It was actually a artist's rendition mistake of making a sketching with the feet stacked on top of one another that has led to them becoming popular in that fashion. But if you're serious about performance, we wanna make sure that we're doing our side planks with the top foot forward. Now, when we're doing this, we really wanna make sure that the bottom leg, we have a straight line from the ankle to the knee to the hip to the shoulder, to the ear. Now, as we do this, we're gonna set up with the top foot split. So notice my foot is forward, the inside of the leg is on the uh, ground. Now, the reason this is important is we're gonna fire the adductors. You're also gonna get more glute med min complex, as well as the obliques on this side. Now, one tip that a lot of people miss to keep the stress off the shoulder is you can take your middle finger, find the bone on your shoulder, and then all you're going to do is kind of curl forward and then place the palm on that shoulder. What you're doing is physically blocking that arm from being able to come up. And this helps uh, quite a bit, especially for those of us who ride quite a lot. Now, as we go through here, we're gonna brace. We wanna have a straight line position here if possible. And then we're going to lift. Now you'll notice that I'm not tilting my hips forward or back. I'm also not letting my butt sit back either or bending my knees. Both legs are straight. The insole of the top leg is forward and pushing into the ground, activating my adductors, and I can feel the obliques as well. If you're not sure if you're doing this well, have somebody take a picture. We should have a straight line from the back ankle, hip, knee, shoulder, into the ear. You're gonna hold this for 15 to 20 seconds and then come back down. Now, when you come down, we don't wanna collapse down to the side. We want to bend the knee down to the ground, bring that leg back, and then we can hinge back and down. We're practicing good spine hygiene, and then from there we can sit up. This is the side plank, top leg forward. It seems like nowadays everybody's talking about the glutes, but they're missing the fact that we need to learn how to tie the rib cage and pelvis together and get motion only from the glutes. The straight leg kickback is a fantastic exercise for cyclists to tease out the weaknesses that you have and to help you train how to lock the rib cage and pelvis together. The way we're gonna start off is we're going to go into an all fours position. Now, when we're here, we wanna make sure that the knee is directly underneath the hip. We don't wanna to be too far forward. We don't wanna to be too far back. And then we're going to have the wrist underneath the shoulder. Same thing here. Now, important part for this exercise that tends to be a little bit challenging for cyclists is getting you to push down and forward into the ground. So we don't wanna hang out with the shoulder blades back. We wanna push down and forward, activating the muscle called the serratus anterior. From here, we're going to brace the stomach, keep the chin tucked. 
I'm going to tighten my lats and my midsection exactly as we did for this, the McGill crunch. We're gonna brace and then we're just going to slide, moving only from the glute, keeping the leg close to the ground and then coming back down. What we don't want to have is swaying side to side, and we also don't want to have you arching your back in order to execute this movement. Keep it nice and still, slide back, squeeze the glute, back down. If you can actually get more range of motion with just the glute, go ahead and do so, but it's not a must. All we're looking for here is a nice solid position on the bike and getting you to be able to fire that glute while keeping a nice solid midsection. While a lot of people like to think about crunches and sit-ups to help you build your strength on the bike, actually what we need is rotary stability. The front plank hand to shoulder is an incredibly challenging exercise to do correctly, as you're going to see here in just a second. Now if you can't do this, we can always modify it by taking you down to your knees, but it does not mean that it is an easier exercise. It's actually a little bit more challenging. Let's look at the normal one. We're going to start off in a regular plank position. We're going to walk the feet shoulder width or a little bit wider if this is your first time. We want to make sure that the uh, wrists are directly underneath the shoulders and all we're going to try and do, we're going to brace the entire body, midsection abs, without lifting or moving to touch the opposite shoulder. See here, bad side, so there I shifted just a little bit. What I mean by bad side is I had a surgery last year and thanks Corona, I did not manage to get the full physical therapy done quite yet. Boom. You can see how challenging this exercise is sweating just a little bit. This is not one to mess around with. We're not looking to have your hips wobble side to side. If you can't do it without breaking at the hips, the exercise is too hard. Drop down to your knees, take your feet off the ground, and try and keep that neutral spine position. It is incredibly difficult and will massively help your climbing, your sprinting, and your ability to be on the saddle all day. When most of us think about core training for the bike, we're thinking about the stomach only. But in fact, the core includes all of the muscles between your knees, your elbows, and your neck. This next exercise will make that very apparent if it is not yet already. The hip lift march with isometric hold is simply a hip lift, simply a hip lift, where we're going to hold a 90 degree march. So it's gonna look like this. We wanna make sure that the feet are engaged with the ground. That means all of the toes. We're gonna to feel the bottom of the foot engaged. We're gonna brace just a little bit, similar to what we did with the McGill crunch. From there, a glute only hip lift. And now comes the fun part. Without letting a hip drop or move, we want to lift one leg up to 90 degrees. I wanna feel glute, not hamstring, as well as be able to keep my hips level. i hold for the amount of time, so we'll say seven seconds, come back down. You'll notice this hip did not drop. Now let's try the other side. So I'm not driving my elbows into the ground. Brace, squeeze, that's pretty good. You'll notice my hip stayed level. You can feel the hamstring just a tiny bit on that side. There we go, a little bit more glute. And then back down and down. That's one repetition. You'll complete this for usually two to three repetitions. It's not uncommon to get hamstring cramping on this. If that's the case, you want to go a little bit lower in the march and make sure that you're only getting the glute to activate. When it comes to squatting, a lot of us tend to think about barbell back squats or front squats. But in fact, if you have a kettlebell at home and know how to count time or have a timer that can help you, the 3131 tempo goblet squat can be a massive game changer for you. Let's take a look at what that would actually look like. First things first, we're gonna take the kettlebell by the horns. So we're gonna hold it right side down. Now, if you have only one kettlebell at home and it's a little bit too heavy, you can flip it upside down, but we generally wanna try and have the correct weight. But let's be honest, a lot of places in the world, you can't even find one kettlebell. Now for the squat itself, we're gonna find what's comfortable for you. So when I squat after my uh, little accident, my knee on my right goes out a little bit. So my toes go out and that's okay for me. You wanna find what's comfortable for you. There is no rule that says your feet have to be perfectly straight. That's not how it works. Now once we're there, we're gonna hold the kettlebell at the chest, shoulders back. We're gonna try and actively rip the kettlebell apart. So I'm ripping with my lats, pulling the handles apart. The elbows are gonna come in between the knees. Now the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna keep the ribs down. We don't wanna push our butt back and we don't wanna flare our shoulders. 
And we're going to pretend as if we've pressed the button on an elevator. So we're going to rip the kettlebell apart. Three Mississippi, two Mississippi, one Mississippi. Hold tension. One Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And then we're going to count one Mississippi and right back down. So the 3131 comes from the tempo itself. Three seconds down, one second pause, but keeping tension through the entire body. Three seconds up, using the glutes to drive, and then one second to reset. Perform this for as many repetitions as is written, or however many you can with the weight you have with great technique. Oh, I feel fitter already. So there you have it, a set of focused and specific core exercises that are a solid basis for making you far more efficient on the bike. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Road CC for more great content and stay tuned for more videos in this series to help you use strength training to really benefit your riding. Hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss any of these vids and thanks for watching.